Hi, today I want to talk about three possible ways of installing and using Darknet and YOLO. For those of you who don't know what Darknet is, first of all I want to say that I am not referring to Dark Web. Darknet is a neural network framework for testing and training computer vision models. For example, you can train it to automatically detect a cat, a dog, a bottle or any other object in an image or a video. What's really cool about Darknet is that it is open source, so it is free for anyone to use. YOLO that I mentioned before is an object detection method. It greatly increases the speed at which the objects are detected. If you are completely new to Darknet and YOLO, and you want to understand what you have to do to start to use it, then you are in the right place, because I will go over the possible ways how you can install and run Darknet, and the problems and considerations during this process. I am completely new to Darknet myself, so I believe I have some idea about the questions that might be relevant to you. I won't go through the exact steps that you have to take to install Darknet, but during this video I will provide you with all the resources that you need to get started. As far as I know, there are three possible ways of using Darknet. First way would be to install it on your personal computer. Second way would be to use cloud computing services. And the third possible way would be to use cloud computing to train the object. But after the training process is finished, to use your personal computer for image recognition. Now I will go over each of these possible ways and discuss what you should consider while choosing between them. Let's start with the option where you are installing Darknet and running the object detection on your personal computer. I definitely do not recommend this approach in case you are just starting out. The main reason for this would be that it is quite long and complex process to get everything up and running. Just to get to the point where you can start to install Darknet, you would have to first install something like 7 pieces of software on your computer. After that you would have to configure everything and you better have good problem solving skills because I'm pretty sure that you will encounter some problems during this process. For me personally it took something like over 8 hours to get everything running and at least half of that time I spent while trying to understand why something's not working as it should and after all the time I'm still not confident that I configured everything correctly because I was expecting slightly better performance based on the hardware that I have. And yeah, you also better have some good hardware if you are taking this route, because neural network training is quite resource demanding process. And if you are thinking about applications that require real-time object detection, then you better have something like at least RTX 2060 GPU. After all these bad things, I also want to mention few upsides for running Darknet on your personal computer. As someone who a lot of times has low internet speed, I can say that it would be quite nice if I wouldn't have to upload and download all those files to the cloud all the time. And the second nice thing is that you can run your processes as long as you want. The cloud service that I am using right now is Google Cloud, and few things that it does if it detects inactivity for some period, it disconnects me from the session. And something like every 12 hours, it removes all the files that you have on the cloud to free the space. But there are some workarounds for this problem. If after all that you heard, you still want to install Darknet on your personal computer, I can definitely suggest tutorials made by augmented startups. He has nice step-by-step -step approach that I liked on how to install Darknet and YOLO. I will leave a link into the video description to his videos if you are interested to see his tutorials. One of the things that I would suggest in case if you decide to follow his tutorials would be to try to stick to the same software versions that he is using. Bunch of my problems were related to the fact that I used newer versions of the software. That did not apply to all the software, but for example Python was one of the softwares that fell into this category. Now we come to the second option, running Darknet and object detection using cloud services. 
What's nice about this approach is that you basically need a toaster with an internet access and you're good to go. All the processing will be done on external hardware, so in this case you don't need no fancy hardware yourself. In case of using Google Collab as your cloud service, the full process of teaching a new object and then detecting it on your videos or images looks something like this. First you have to take images of that object that you want to teach, then mark objects location in each of the images. After that you will have to upload all the files on your Google Drive. Then open Google Collab Notebook in which you will have to run some Python script to install Darknet, do some preparation work and teach the new object. And after that you will be able to run the object detection on your videos, images and store the results on Google Drive. As I discussed earlier, few of the downsides using this approach is that you have to upload and download all the files to and from your Google Drive, and in case if you have slow internet, that will take some time. The second downside was that Google Collab checks and disconnects you from the session in case you are inactive for some period of time, and something like each 12 hours, it removes all your files from the workspace, so you have to start from scratch. I don't think that's a very huge deal, because you can save all your notebooks and files on your Google Drive while you are working. In general, I think this is nice and convenient way for running Darknet and YOLO, and I recommend this approach in case you are a beginner, because you don't have to go through all that hustle to install Darknet on your own computer and you also get the chance to use free hardware. If you want to try out running Darknet on cloud, I can suggest you the tutorials made by the AI guy. He has videos on how to install and run Darknet and YOLO on cloud, how to train a new object, how to run object detection on your webcam's video stream, and much more. You will find a link into the video description below. Ok. You might think all this is nice, but what if I want to implement the video detection in my own applications and run them on my own hardware, while still benefiting from all the things mentioned previously by using cloud? For you I have the third option. The third option is to use cloud computing services to install Darknet and train a new object and after that download some files that enables you to implement object detection in your own applications and to use your own hardware. Of course, the object detection speed will depend on your hardware, but the fact that you don't have to go through the hassle of installing Darknet and you get to use a free GPU for neural network training, in my opinion those are quite nice benefits. If your final project requires real-time object detection, you will still need a decent GPU, but in case you don't care about real-time object detection, the story is a bit different. To give you a better feeling of what you can expect, I can share my experience so far. If I have to be honest, I haven't even tried using GPU for object detection using this approach, basically because I still have to learn how to do it. But what I have tried is using two different CPUs for object detection. The first CPU is AMD's Ryzen 7 4800H, which is a decent CPU for today's standards. But the second one is quite old Intel Core i5 processor, i5-3320M. Here you can see the AMD Ryzen 7 processor in action. I would say that each object detection requires something like a few hundred milliseconds. And here you can see me using the Intel Core i5 processor. It looks like that in this case we are talking about something like 1 to 2 seconds per one image. I consider these as decent results, and if you are not concerned about real-time object detection, 
it shows that you can still implement object detection in your applications, despite the fact that you don't have the latest hardware. So what are the steps that you have to take in case if you want to use this approach? First you have to follow the tutorial made by PySource that I'm showing you here right now. He will take you through the process of marking objects in your images, uploading all the necessary files to Google Drive, going through the neural network training process using Google Colab, and running object detection on images that are located on your personal computer. But if you are doing this for the first time, you will encounter some problems during this last step. This is why you should follow his tutorial until 23 minutes and 5 seconds and then come back to my video and follow the steps that I will show you here right now. The main problems will be related to the fact that you have to install Python and you will have to install the libraries necessary to run the object detection. So the first thing that you have to do in case you haven't already installed Python is go to Google and search for Python. Now click on Downloads and download the latest version of Python. Launch the X file that you just downloaded and the only important thing that you have to change here is to check the Add Python to Path. After that click on Install Now and go through the installation process. Once that's done we can continue. If you followed PySource's tutorial you should have the following files downloaded and created on your computer at this moment. You should have an images folder with the object that you have trained. You should have the weights file that you downloaded from Google Drive after training your object. And then you should have a folder with the files that you downloaded during PySource's tutorial that contains Google Collab's notebook file, a configuration file and Python script file. Create a new folder. In my case I will call it object detection and copy these three things into that folder. Now move this folder to your hard drive. In my case I will move it to my D drive. One more thing that we have to do. Move your weights file to the same folder where you have your Python script file. To continue you will need some type of text editor. Of course you can simply use Notepad, but I would suggest using Notepad++ or in my case I will use Sublime Text Editor because it highlights the text and makes it easier to read. Open up the yellow object detection.py file. Here on the top you can see all the libraries that are necessary to run this script. To install them first open up command prompt by searching for cmd and then hit enter. Now type here pip install opencv-python. Hit enter. Now what will happen, all the required installation files will be downloaded and OpenCV will be installed on your computer. In my case I already have OpenCV installed, so it says that requirement already is satisfied.
when the installation is finished, type Python and hit enter. What we will do, we will check if all the necessary libraries are installed. Type import cv2 and hit enter. Repeat this process with the other three libraries. If everything is installed properly, there should be no error messages. If the library that you will be importing will be missing, then you should see a module not found error. In that case, try to install the missing libraries, but as far as I know, the only thing that we have to install is OpenCV, and the other things should already be there. Now you can close the command prompt and return to the yellow object detection.py file. Here you can see two file names yellow v3 training last weights and yellow v3 test config. These two files at this moment should be at the same folder where you have your yellow object detection.py file because the script will search for these files in the same folder where it is located. Make sure that the name of the weights file and the configuration file is the same as those two files in your folder. This class name that you can see here, it's the name of your custom object. In my case, it is target. But in general, it doesn't matter too much what you enter here and you can change this name freely. If you want, you can simply leave it the same. The last thing that we have to do is to edit this image path so that it would match your case. In my case, the path to my image files is d slash object detection slash images. I will simply copy and paste this path to the script file. Now save the changes and you should be all set. Now close the yellow object detection.py file and launch the script by double clicking on it. You can see that it is running object detection on the images in your folder. You can go through your images by pressing arrow key, but also any other key should work. So at this point you should be all set. Press like if this video was helpful and hit subscribe if you want to see more of my content. Right now at this moment I am not thinking to make more of these darknet tutorials, but what I am thinking is I have few interesting projects in my mind where I will be using this object detection. If you will want to see that, make sure to subscribe. For this moment, that's it. Cheers guys. Bye.